let's walk through the Fusion 360 cam for the fourth axis part we just machined. Welcome to another Fusion Friday, folks. So no different than a normal cam operation. We'll start with a setup. Now for the stock, we turned this part on the lathe last week, and you can actually click here if you want to watch uh, that video. And so what I'm going to do is instead of using the default options for stock, which would be a relative size box or even a relative size, say, cylinder, which would look something like, let's see if we do that in zero, should get a cylinder around that part. I'm actually going to choose a specific body that we modeled up. So I'll change the mode to from solid. It's going to ask me for my solid. Over here uh, on the tree on the left, I can expand sort of the CAD side of my project, and I've got a couple of different components. The one that we see right now is what we actually want to machine. That's the finished part. I'm going to hide that, turn off the light bulb, and I'm going to turn on this part called stock. I click the light bulb, and we get this part. So this is exactly what it looked like coming off the lathe. I click that. I can now hide it again and bring back my part, and it's got that original body uh, selected. And it's kind of hard to tell, but if you take a look, one of the differences is the part when it came off the lathe, which again is our stock. It doesn't have these hemispherical cuts, and if you look, you can see um, our stock shows that this area here is still sort of filled in. So perfect. The next thing is orientation. So I'll go back in and edit this setup. Z is the sky, and then X positive is when your right hand out, Y is sort of forward. So I know that looks starting funny, but sky, and then like, well, it doesn't look good on camera, but Y is forward, X to the right. So right now, we've got the Z pointed the wrong way. So this is easy to do, but you have to follow the order here. So start with the first option. What's our orientation? Select this one, Z axis and, y, and X axis. Now it asks you for what's the Z axis. You can click on either a perpendicular face, like I could click on that because that's perpendicular to the Z, or I can click on a line that's in line with the Z like this. I'll click this line. Now it moved that point. Don't worry about that. We'll get to that in a second. What's my X axis? Same thing. I could click a face like this, or I could click a line like this. Boom. Again, points in the wrong place. Don't worry. Now we fix that. What's the origin? It's got us on a stock box point, so that's a point somewhere on the stock. Another option would be a model box point or a, just a selected point, which would be anywhere in your parametric model. And I apparently have lost my Z, which is a little frustrating that I've been clicking around here. But I want to do a model box point, and I want that point to, to be the point. Now, I lost my Z, so real quick, I'll click here and here. Again, I lost my point, but I'll pick it again because it default. Notice it defaulted. Um, the blue is now highlighted for model, box, model point, so it's ready for you to click that. Click it. There we go. <laughs> now, our Z is pointed the wrong way. Just click the arrow, and it'll invert. And now, if you take a look, our Z is toward the sky, Y is forward, X is to the right. Let me show you that again. We'll do a new setup just to show you how easy that is. New setup. Our stock will be from a, a solid. I'll turn off my part and turn on my stock. Click it. Good. Turn off the stock. Go back to the model. Now for the setup, I'm going to do select the z-axis, this first option here. I'll pick this line. For the x, I'll pick this. And for the, I'll change this to a selected point and invert that. So it's not hard, you just have to go through the options and kind of obey its procedures. Awesome. 2D adaptive clearing. I'll pick just a 5 16 ball, or pick a 5 16 bull nose end mill. And for the geometry, we want to machine this cavity right here. So click this line and that line. See how that kind of gives you the blue area, what we want? Heights should be okay. Click OK. And the only problem with this, a couple things, we're leaving too much radial and axial, and it's obviously cutting, making a big cut. So I like to change one thing at a time. So I'll edit this, and under Passes, Stock to Leave. I don't want to leave anything on the floor, so I'll change the axial to zero. 
And really we can only leave, we can leave like five thou radial and we'll come clean that up in a second. Click OK. Click on the front view and you can now see the toolpath is on the floor. Good. To fix the fact that it's cutting so much. Well the question is why is it cutting so much on the left and the right here? Left and the right here. Take a look. It, it's looking at um, this whole blue area because it sees the model is that wide. It doesn't know that the model is a little bit thinner at the top there. So if we enable this stock contours, that's what shows you exactly what I'm referring to. It sees the stock as being this wide rectangle around the part. Instead, if I change it to that, see how it highlights the stock is just that area there? Should be, if I click OK, it reduces that toolpath. Awesome. Looks much better. I want to do a cleanup on these walls. I can right click, create derived operation, 2D milling, 2D contour, and just click OK. I love it. It knows not to leave. We go take a look. Any um, stock to leave, so it's going to clean up those perfectly f uh, flat sidewalls, but everything else comes in. It pulls in your tool, your feeds and speeds, your heights, all that stuff awesome feature to, to make use of. Let's mill these flats next. So same thing, I'm going to do a 2D adaptive clearing and when I go to the geometry and before I pick this, actually I could probably pick it first. Um, I'm not sure it's going to be happy to do that or not. This is where we get to the fourth axis stuff, tool orientation. All we're doing is we're going to add a, basically another work coordinate uh, system that's going to tell it which way is Z and, and actually X as well. So What's our z-axis? It's going to be this right here. See how it's pointing up like that? Now, x is wrong. x should be where the y is right now. So what's my x-axis? I'll click this big place right here. Boom. Done. Click OK. We get a good toolpath. And if we want to put that on the other side, we could create another operation and do another instance of a new work coordinate system that via tool orientation that shows the Z pointed the other way, but let's just do this. Right click, add to pattern. And if we change the pattern type to circular, click any circle on the around the center axis like this right here and take a look. It defaults to two instances around 360, so we get that toolpath shown right over there. And actually I realize we don't want to leave any um, stock to leave, no big deal. I'll expand this pattern here and that'll let me edit the adaptive clearing under passes turn off stock to leave click OK and it updates both boom awesome to do actually let's take a look real quick at the code if I do a post and I pick our post processor which is available to download in the video description I want to show that we start off right here with the first we're clearing out that top pocket where the logo is. That's at A0. The rotation of your fourth axis is A. So A0 is your original location. We scroll down. Here's the 2D contour. That was what cleaned up the sidewalls. Still at A0, so no movement. This one should have moved. And sure enough, the first thing, A270. Awesome. That means if the last one was 180 degrees off, it should be at 90. We scroll down. A90. Awesome, code's working. To do the holes, drilling, I'll pick a spot drill. Geometry, I'll pick this little hole right here, but same thing, we've got to do tool orientation. It's the same process as what we did for the flat here. What's my Z axis? Pick this little hole here and see how the Z aligns itself with the axis of that hole. Now it's inverted, so I'll click the little arrow here, or you can click flip Z axis, either one. I'll click this guy. That flips it, and my X is wrong, but it's, if you notice, it's already waiting for me to tell it the X, so I'll just click right here, and boom, I'm good. Click OK. Same thing, we can do individual operations and set the tool orientation for each hole here. We should also, though, be able to do a pattern. So if I right click, Add to new pattern, circular, click here, 
Now, I don't know, I was playing around with this, I don't know why, to be honest with you, but it's for some reason it's 135 degrees. Pretty sure that the those outside two holes are 90 degrees off. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I hope I'm wrong, because otherwise I'm not sure why that works correctly. But that's all you have to do. And now you've got this pattern where you're doing those three holes, and it's going to rotate the three plus one. It's actually pretty easy, folks. Last thing here we'll do, the hemispherical grooves that go around this uh, whole part here, we created a piece of construction geometry, uh, which let me turn that on. So again, here's my model. If I expand the sketches of that model. I think it was the last sketch, second to last sketch. There we go. Click the light bulb. Now you can see my black line. The easiest way I can do, found to do this was a trace with a ball end mill. So 2D, trace, I'll pick a ball end mill. quarter inch is fine, and just pick the uh, toolpath. Click OK. So we get the toolpath. The construction geometry allows me to lead in um, outside, because normally trace doesn't have any sort of a lead in. It goes straight down. Um, for instance, if you're when you're engraving this text, you don't want to um, lead in. You obviously want to be right on the text. And to rotate this around six times, uh, pattern it. Oh, actually, look. So it created that. Um, Right now, it's inside the same pattern that we did for the drill, which is not what I wanted. So to get it out of that pattern, I'll drag it up to here. And now it's independent of those two patterns. I can right click, add a new pattern, same thing, circular, and I'll do six instances, and you can see that's it, folks. I'm super excited for Simultaneous 4th to come out. I had the chance to go to a Portland meeting with the Fusion 360 team where they talked about what's coming. They are working on it. It's absolutely something that's on the schedule. Um, I'm hoping it's 2016. I don't have any more specific or better news for that. Um, it will have adaptive strategies in the 4th, which is super cool. Um, 3 plus 1 is great, uh, very useful. It's obviously not as useful as 4th uh, Simultaneous for some things. So. Um, hopefully this gets folks up and running at least on their Tormox with the post processor and some basics on the camp side. Take care folks. See you next Friday.